Up until now, we've not really had the best practice with storing passwords in our database. We've just been storing them plain text, which is a huge no-no. So I, you know, hopefully you haven't been doing this in a real app that uh, has real client, you know, real clients and real passwords and all that. Um, we're going to be changing that from now on forward to have a hashed password. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a hash, a hash is a one way kind of sort of encrypted thing. Now, what I mean by that is uh, encryption means a uh, bi-directional, meaning that uh, somebody can decrypt it and get the original value out. A hash supposedly um, only allows you to hash something, to turn it into basically some garbly good garbage value that you don't really care about. Um, the hash algorithm can sort of like figure things out. Now, uh, the reason we want to use something like hash is it forces uh, any kind of hackers, if they get access to your database, to get a, a list of potential passwords, hash them, and compare the hashes. If they match, they found the password. If they don't, well, they haven't found it yet. And that's usually done through a brute force attack. Um, we There's a few things that we can do to sort of prevent, uh, to help our users buy time to reset their passwords before the, um, the hackers find out what those are. Um, we're going to be using Bcrypt for this, uh, mostly because Bcrypt is very familiar to a lot of users coming from like the, the, the Node.js world. Uh, there's several other algorithms. The one I would probably recommend would be Argon2. Um, using something like Bcrypt, it, learning that, you can then go and implement Argon2 very easily. Um, so uh, let's go and find it. So first of all, we just do a search on Create.io and we find Bcrypt. It's just under the name Bcrypt. Easy enough. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my project and install it. So we're going to do a cargo add bcrypt. Uh, we don't need any extra features in here. Um, and then uh, we can write can write a couple functions to actually just do the thing. So uh, first of all, in users, I'm going to write a hash password function. So function hash password. Uh, we're going to take in a password, which is going to be a string. I'm okay with taking ownership here because I don't want this password to be available anywhere else in my application. By taking ownership of it uh, and then just destroying it at the end of this, it's not, I couldn't use it unless I cloned it when passing in, which will be very obvious. Um, okay, so we want the hash, hash password, please. Uh, we're going to... We're going to take in the password. Um, we're going to return a result of a string for the hash and then also a status code in the case that this is failing. OK, great. Um, but, all right, so we're going to use bcrypt uh, hash, pass it in the password, which does take a full string, the cost. So how much, how much do we want this to, to do with the cost? If we do something like an eight, it's going to be super fast to hash the password and our users won't notice any time delay whatsoever. But it also means that if a hacker gets their access, gets their hands on our database and they're using a um, like a rainbow table or a lookup table to like find and check like, you know, millions of passwords, they can do millions of passwords per second. So eight is probably not the right one to choose. But at the same time, if we choose something like 31, it's going to be many days before each password is, is uh, hashed. And uh, our users don't have time for that. They, they don't want to like each of them have to, uh, to wait for uh, 31, you know, several days, probably weeks before their, their hash is done. Let's choose something a little bit, a little bit lower. Um, 16 is still a long time. Uh, that's actually quite noticeable. I'm going to choose 14 for this. Um, okay. So if we do that now, hash returns a, uh, bcrypt result, which is not, we want to convert that into this other result. So let's do our map error. 
uh, we do have this error and I want to turn this into a status code of internal server error. Okay, so we're happy with hash password. Now we also want to just, while we're here, write a verify password. How, how do we like know that the password is correct? Well, we're gonna rehash it and compare them, but we don't need to the, write that ourselves. There is a verify function that bcrypt gives us. So we want function verify, uh, let's call this verify, ha uh, no, verify password is good. Uh, we're gonna take in a password, which is a full string, take in ownership again of it. I want that plain text password in my code as little as possible. Um, sorry if you hear that. My cat is right next to me and he's playing with a, playing with a little, um, little toy. Um, and then we want to bring in the hash also. And a hash is going to be a stir. That's fine for, uh, for us to have. Uh, and we're going to return a result. Um, this result is going to have a Boolean and then a status code. So it's going to be true or false of whether or not you're allowed in or just like internal server error that we something something terrible happened. Okay, so we're gonna do bcrypt verify. We take in the password, which is a string. We take in that hash, which is a stir. Um, and we do need to do the map error. We have error and we have status code internal server error. Okay, and we return that. So now that we've done those two things, we should be able to implement uh, passwords here. So, or, sorry, hashing the password. So in create user, uh, before we set the user here, um, I just wanna, here, we'll do this right here. Password, instead of request user password, let's just do a hash password and pass in request user password like that. Uh, and we do need to question mark you. Okay, so we're happy there. And then, uh, in login. So looking through this, I, I realized that um, this is even less secure that, uh, and, and some of you may have noticed this when I first wrote this, we're not actually checking the, uh, the password. Um, we just check to see if the, the user is, um, the username was found. And then we're like, yeah, we're, you're logged in. Um, so that's uh, not exactly good, um, good security. But now we have the ability to verify the hash. Uh, so we have our database user. Let's go ahead and do an if, if we don't, so if it's a false, so if the password does not match, then uh, I want to do an early return and guard out of here. So uh, if the verify password, uh, password is gonna be the, DB user, oh, sorry, not DB user. This is the request user password. And then the hash is going to be a reference, the DB user dot password, because that's the hash. So if, if you don't get verified, if you're a false, that means they, the password does not match into the hash. Uh, we are going to do an early return error, status code, uh, unauthorized. But then if everything is good, go ahead, create our fake token, which we will be fixing very shortly. Uh, and the rest should be good. So now at this point, uh, we are checking this. Oh, and I want to question mark you because you could fail. Okay. Let's test this. So I'm gonna go back into uh, my Thunder Client. We're going to, um, now I shouldn't be able to log in with my old like original user any name, name anymore. We get this 500 server error because there's no, ha like the hash isn't really a real hash. So instead let's create a brand new account. Uh, I do have to make a new username for this because we do have a unique on the username in the database. Uh, this is our lovely password. This is how long 14 is taking. So maybe 12 would be better. Um, it's like at the edge of what, what I would accept for a user. Um, okay, so 
Now we're gonna go to log in, and I want to log in as Brooks too. Uh, and it takes the same amount of time to log in because it rehashes that password, but we're all good. If I had attempted to log in with the wrong username, we would get a 401 unauthorized. Uh, and this is how long it would take a hacker each time to verify a password. So it would be literally drive them all insane or they would have to spend a lot of money to paralyze this and uh, check a lot of passwords at the same time. So um, this is how now we have secure password checkings because we're no longer storing the passwords in plain text in the database. Um, again, you don't have to use Bcrypt. You can use any of the other sort of hashing algorithms. Argon2 is another uh, great recommendation. So with that, uh, I hope that you have, I hope this was helpful. Um, uh, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.